Hi everyone, how you doing? I am Glenda with Freyland and Friends, and I am going to start reading chapter 12 of my book, The Search, and I will be putting a playlist up here in the eye. There will be an eye there. Yeah. Anyway, if you click on that, it will take you to the playlist for chapters 1 through 11, and you can catch up and then come back and this will be in the playlist after I'm done so if you want to get caught up before listening to me read the rest then go to the playlist and get caught up to wherever you're at or start getting into it and for the rest of you who have been following then stick with us because we're going to read this thing Sheridan, wake up! Diggory was reaching into her tent, grabbing her at her toes. Uh, what? Diggory, what do you want? I was sleeping. You were talking in your sleep, loud enough to wake me in my own tent. I could only make out the words look and dark. Oh, sorry, I'm not... I'll try not to talk in my sleep, Sheridan grumbled. I never knew I talked in my sleep. The next morning, they all gathered on the hilltop and looked below them into the deep canyon. It seemed overshadowed by an outcropping of rock along the opposite ridge. Wow, Diggory said. Sheridan, look at that rainbow. His words echoed back. Awesome, Sheridan said loudly and listened for the echo. They all laughed and Diggory pointed to, his, to a space between the overhanging rocks on the opposite side of the canyon near the horizon. A rainbow seemed to make its way from the horizon over the outcrop and disappear into the canyon below. Oh my lord, that is worth all the ugliness we went through. Sheridan felt her eyes tearing from the beauty of a heavenly vision. What do you, why do you say that? Shepherd asked. A rainbow is a promise of what's ahead and a goodbye to what's behind. She wiped a few tears from her eyes. My mother used to say that to me all the time. She was right, Shepard remarked. Diggory said his name softly and got a faint echo, and then he spoke loudly and heard the same, heard the stronger repeat. We know why I heard you last night, Diggory broke in. What? Sheridan asked. Remember? Diggory said, I woke you up because you were talking in your sleep. I heard you all the way over to my tent. You did? I don't remember that. Oh, well, of course not. You woke me up, scratching on my tent, making all that kind of racket, and you don't even remember me waking you up. What's fair about that? Diggory feigned disappointment. Not a darn thing, but that's fine with me. Sheridan said in her best hillbilly holler, imitation. The echo came back with the same fake hillbilly twang. All three of them had a good laugh. That was awful, Sheridan, Diggory said. He's right too, Shepard laughed as heartily as his followers. Follow me, Shepard called. They set off down a well-worn path that looked to circle downwards for a short distance and then curve upward. Is that where we're going? 
For the first time, Diggory walked along beside Shepherd instead of following grudgingly. He pointed toward the bluff at the top of the mountain. Shepherd nodded. Yes, we'll climb up to that mountaintop, but I will not be taking you down the other side. Why? Diggory asked. I have been there one time, and it was more horrifying than anywhere else I've ever been. Consider that canyon I led you through was mild by comparison. Once was enough. Is there something bad in the mountains that frighten you? Sheridan listened in as the two spoke. Within those mountains are many things. I went beyond them and had to battle my way back against evils much, much worse than the ones we met in the canyon. I have no need to go that way again, and neither do you. You mean you don't want us to go there? Sheridan stopped on the path and turned to Diggory. I say what I mean, but you don't listen. Open up and hear, Shepherd admonished. Diggory, Sheridan growled softly as she tugged it on his sleeve. He is right. I understand him just fine. You need to open up and listen to what he's saying to you. Why do you trust him? You had your own misgivings when we started into a, the canyon. You're buying into whatever this guy is selling. I know more now because I listen. There is nothing to buy into, Dig. I'm just accepting what he says. Shepard hasn't led us into any danger. He's led us past it. I quit questioning him and started trusting him when I saw the light in the, his light in the canyon. What do you call that canyon? You're saying that wasn't dangerous? That acid spitting thing sure looked dangerous. Sure, sure looked dangerous. Gee, Cher, you are naive. Maybe, but I didn't say the dangers weren't there just that he never allowed them to hurt us. Have you forgotten so fast his glow that led us through the terrible place? No, I remember that. I think he had a high power flashlight, one that has no dark spots and it gives a spherical light. Come on, Diggory, you are trying too hard for explanations. I don't get it. You're the scientist, Cher. And yet you are telling me to just accept all of this and him without questioning it. What gives? I am a scientist, but I also know that many things are not explained away by the wisdom of science. Looking at science as the only answer to any, everything is a mistake that closes us off to the beauty of discovering things we can't explain away by it. That's what I tell my students. We can't discover the impossible if we look only for the possible. You're not like any scientist te science teacher I ever had. Diggory sounded ex exasperated. Then you had the worst kind of science teachers. Sheridan was angry with Diggory now. She had been sad for him and he had been happy for him when the sores healed at the lake, afraid for him in the canyon, and now she was angry. Look at it like this. We once knew that things just fell, but we didn't care why. We knew the earth was flat. We knew the earth was the center of the universe. We knew people who got diseases were sinners. Sheridan spoke to Diggory more calmly, hoping he would listen more to her calm 
than her unfortunate anger. Okay, but you are making an argument both for and against science, Cher. Exactly, Sheridan replied. She is correct, Diggory. Shepard spoke up as he, as if he had been listening to their entire conversation. You heard that, Shepard? Diggory said as if accusing the leader of eavesdropping. I couldn't really help it. Sheridan's embrace of principles for the tangible and intangible are refreshing. She understands a lot that you haven't, simply because she has experienced things you have not. She's learning to accept the unexplainable. Diggory had a puzzled look on his face, but didn't say any more. They walked in silence for a few minutes. A bright vista of color spread out in front of them as they came over the top of the hill. Shep, I thought you said this was unforgiving territory. This place isn't bad at all. As long as I am with you, you can come to no harm. This spot can become temptation if you aren't careful. It sure looks better from up here, Shepard smiled, taking a deep breath. You sound like the Lord himself, Diggory chuckled at Shepard. I am. Yeah, right, Diggory laughed as he once again looked at Sheridan and twirled her, his finger around his ear. Sheridan was crying for Diggory. Sheridan, don't fall for all this crap. Diggory sounded concerned. Diggory, I'm not the one falling right now. I will finish chapter 12, maybe tomorrow. I think maybe I will. And if there's enough time, I'll have the puppets out too. I think they're kind of missing this. So I hope you're enjoying it. Diggory seems to have trouble going kind of back and forth. We do that, don't we? In life, we just kind of go back and forth. We accept it, then we don't accept it. We like it, then we don't like it. It's like the weather in Nebraska. <laughs> Never satisfied. Ah, sometimes. Sometimes it's good. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. And please, remember to smile and wave. Do subscribe and click the notification bell. Give us a like. Share us. Make a comment below. What do you think Shepherd is? Just a normal Shepherd? I think he's a wise guy? Do you think he's just a wise man? What do you think? Anyway. We'll see you tomorrow. Love you all. <laughs>